Hey everyone, welcome back to Camp Keyframe. In today's video, I'm going to show you my favorite After Effects plugins. So I'm gonna quickly run through these, not spend a lot of time on them, but just show you what they are in general, and then you can check them out yourselves uh, when you buy them or download them for free online. Uh, we're gonna start off with Flow. Flow is one of my most used plugins, and I'll just create some uh, shapes here. Like this, oh, so one shape. And if I want to say, give this a position and move it over there. And then I can uh, select both of these keyframes. Uh, right click, go to Easy Ease, go to In My Graph Editor, and I can adjust this curve. Um, and then I have this nice movement there. But with Flow, I don't actually have to do all of that. Um, I can just, uh, let's just undock this here just to show it a bit better on the panel right there. Uh, with flow, I can just select these uh, curves that are already pre-made pre here. So select this one, uh, go to court and hit apply, and then boom, it adds this uh, easing automatically for you. So if I select both of them, go for this one, boom, it adds a different um, easing to it. And it's not an expression, it's just, it really uh, changes the keyframe. So it's non-destructive or something. You can just use it uh, very quickly and easily, hop, and there you go, change it up. Uh, there are a lot of different options here, but one of my ma favorite things here is, uh, let's say I have uh, a different object here, like that, and I want to have this move, let's see, over here to this side, at the same, uh, the same speed, the same easing. I can just select both of these, uh, and then go to this little button, let's say I have something else, um, that I've been working on and I have something else selected. Then I can select both of these, click this little button and it will read the values it will, and it will put them here. Select this, hit apply, and then it copies the same exact values from um, those keyframes. So that's the basic uh, stuff of Flow. Uh, you can also create your own uh, values here and then um, uh, you can uh, save that just to use later on. So that's Flow. Next up, Rift. So if you've seen some of my videos in the past, you know some of these plugins. Uh, I, use, I use them a lot, of course. One of them is Rift, that I use a lot. Uh, I can select all of these shapes here, also give them a position. Um, let's just cut them off here, move them down here a bit, move them up a bit further, and I use Flow for a nice um, easing. So let's go with this one. So they all move down. But if I want to stagger them, so uh, I want this to go first, then I want this one, and then this one, this one, and this one, then I can do it like that. Maybe put it over here, and then they move in sequence, which I really like. But if I want to do this automatically with a lot of keyframes, I can just um, uh, select all of these layers, oops, select all of them, uh, go to my arrange here, and I got three here, three frames, uh, descend, hit, uh, hit this button here, and then boom, it sends it. Uh, down um, like a little bit. Uh, I can select this again, boom, 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 and it makes it a bit bigger, the distance between them. I can also, let's uh, undo that, go for ascend, and then it'll go uh, the other way around. I can change this number to 30, and then it will um, create a big distance. And so now they move really slowly after each other. And I can also only use this on the keyframe. So I select all of these, then uncheck layer here, and for keys and then uh, do the same thing again let's go back to three and then hit that and then it only moves the keyframes and not the layers the layers themselves are actually not changed let's say you have uh, multiple keyframes on there but you only want to stagger these ones you select those keyframes and then hit uh, uncheck this box and go to here we also have this randomize button here so if i let's see let's undo this again and i can go to randomize and then it will just randomize those keyframes um so that's also an option there and there are a lot more options here you can go with frames seconds milliseconds whatever you want uh, so just uh, check out rift it's free and it's uh, really great next up motion so easily one of the most versatile tools in my toolbox would be motion i have motion v2 in here uh, it's an old version, but there, I think there's a Motion V3, but I'm just used to this interface for so long now, so I'll just keep using this one, it still works. And it has a lot of different options. I have, let's just say I'll give this some rotation uh, there, move this down a little bit, maybe make this a bit slower, zoom in a bit. 
give this some uh, some easing here and I'll uh, we, oh, oh yeah uh, sorry we have this easing uh, uh, tool little here so I'll open this up and then I can actually change if I select what the keyframe I can change the easing with that just like flow with these parameters as well with these with this tool uh, in out in and out whatever you like uh, it also has this a little tool to, to change your anchor points. So now it's uh, on the on the left. I could change it to the middle, to the top left, uh, to the top right. Of course, this is like that. Um, to the bottom right, to the top left, whatever you like. It's a really a handy tool for that. Um, and what uh, what this what this thing does? Let's just change this back to the bottom here. Uh, what I can also do is select both of them and click Excite. What this will does it makes it bounce a little bit. As you can see, like this little, little little rubbery thing bounces back and forth. It's a really cool effect. Um, you can click burst and it'll make this burst uh, thing that you can um, alter here uh, just to get these nice burst effects. It's really, I don't use it that much, but it's a really cool function as well. Uh, your clone, you can click for null. It makes an in intimate um, instant null object. Uh, you can spin or rotate something. So let's say spin and then this thing just uh, spins. Uh, for you automatically you can change the speed and everything so a lot of different options you can actually rename later so check name and then new name rename and then it enters that here so if you select a lot of layers in your panel uh, and select them all at once so that I can do that let's duplicate all of these and I can select them all and type in hello hello rename and then they're all named to hello so great for keeping your timeline nice and tidy and a lot of different options as well. So just check out Motion. Uh, it's been around for a really long time. Uh, so it's one of the best tools ever for After Effects. So go and buy that. Next up, Overlord. So Overlord is a really great plugin you can use for importing your elements from Illustrator to After Effects. I'm not going to go too deep into it because I've made a separate tutorial about this plugin a while back. I'll link it in the description down below. Uh, but what I can do here is I'll uh, create this little box here and then go to Overlord. It's a plugin that you go at in After Effects and Illustrator as well. And then just click this button and then boom, it's imported into After Effects. Um, that's one of the main options you can do with that. And I can select, uh, I can make all of these different shapes, select all of them, and then they are grouped together as one shape. But if I undo that and I check this little box here, it will split them layers all up at different layers. So there you go. It's a really easy way and they're instantly shape layers, no After Effects or Illustrator uh, files needed. So that's a really awesome tool. So check out the other tutorial I made about that. Next up, Text Evo. So let's create some text here to talk about Text Evo. Cam keyframe, oops, just type my own channel name right. Uh, size that up a bit and what if I want to animate these separate letters or words or whatever into the screen I need to um, create separate words or letters from them and then animate them all um, separately but if I go to window and I go to text evo and I can add the plus here I add the text evo effect and what I can do here is go to transform and let's say I want this go to position up I have these two keyframes here so I want this to go position oops, uh, down a little bit and then boom, you already have this um, animation instantly. Uh, let's also put the opacity at zero. So what you're doing here is uh, creating with zero, zero. It, it just has one or two keyframes, the start and the end. So if I type in zero, it will start at zero and go to 100. So then here I have this effect here. I think it, it takes a bit too long. So I'm gonna go to the delay and put it at 0.5, so that's the, 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 um, the time between each letter. Let's make this, give this some easing as well, like this one. So now it's even cooler, okay. And I can also click this button here and change the based on mode. So now it's letters, I want words. So now the each separate word comes up individually. Change it back to letters again, and then boom, every letter comes up. And you can do a whole lot of cool stuff with this. You can go with scale. Let's put that at uh, like uh, 30, I don't know. Um, rotation, make something really ugly here. Rotate it a bit as well. Style, stroke width, no, not that. Maybe the blur, yeah, let's turn it up, why not? Oh, it's, there you go. And then boom, you get this really crazy little effect. So it's a really great tool to create some fast 
text effects. Don't go too hard on it though, like just like I did right now, it will look really gross. But um, yeah, great tool uh, nonetheless. Okay, next tool up, butt capper. So one of the smallest little tools in the bunch here. Uh, I'm going to tr create a stroke here. Let's turn off the fill and put the stroke at a color, make it a bit bigger. And then these ends of these strokes are um, like harsh. I want them rounded. So what I need to do then is open it up, go to contents, shape one, uh, stroke one, and then let's see where it is. Uh, the line cap, put it at round cap, and then they are rounded. Um, that takes way too long. What I can do uh, also is, is just go to butt capper and click this button here and then boom. Uh, it's a function that should uh, should be um, standard in After Effects in your top bar or something like that, but it isn't. But you could just uh, change these um, uh, things here quickly. If I add these lines here, these corners in there, um, you can also round off these corners by holding Option or Alt on your keyboard and then clicking the button and then boom, those are rounded as well. So really quick and easy tool. And next up, Swatch Roo. So what I really like about Illustrator is that I have all these swatches in here. And I do not have them in After Effects. I have this uh, character color here. If I create a shape, then I have the stroke and the fill color. Let's change that to this color and put the stroke off. Uh, but I want to uh, save my swatches. And the best tool, I think, for that is Swatcheroo. Let's open it up here, where it is, Swatcheroo. And what I can do with this is select this color. Uh, and then uh, click on this button and then read the fill and the stroke. So click and then you see that this is um, red and the blue stroke. Let's turn the stroke up for now so you can see it better. So like that. And what I can do now if I uh, select uh, this, uh, create this new shape. And let's turn this color to something uh, else here to green. And all right. And the stroke to this. And what I want to do is I want to copy these colors, the exact colors to this one, I can just click on this button here and it will add the, the stroke layer to it and then click on this button and then boom, add the fill to it as well. Or I can click the set color to none and it will delete the whole fill. So that's a really great option to um, have your uh, colors. And what I can do is when I read a color, so I'll just change these colors to something pink and light blue, greenish stuff. And I can just uh, add them again. And it will, oops, no, this is the wrong one. This one, read them. And it will actually um, uh, save those colors in my swatch root panel. So it will just save them. The last ones that I used, that I read, will save them in here. Uh, what I can also do is lock some layers here, some colors. So uh, by holding option, and clicking on the color, you can save them. So if I just uh, click on this color here with option, it will save these colors. And then if I uh, read in these new colors, uh, those will be will stay here and I will add uh, these uh, new ones. Uh, I can go to my um, uh, settings here and it's, I want to say let's have six color rows. OK, and then I have all of these colors and I can uh, lock them all if I want. And they always stay locked uh, when you open a new After, Eff After Effects project. They're all in there as well, the, the locked ones. So um, yeah, it's a great way to save your colors in After Effects and just apply them really uh, easily like that. Boom. And then I want this fill color here to be this green. Uh, download that there. Boom. Really easy. Great stuff. So that's the last one uh, I wanted to talk about today. I have a lot more plugins that I use, but not very regularly. All of the plugins that I just showed you guys are the things that I use daily and really improve my workflow and speed. So uh, I really um, encourage you guys to look these plugins up, search for them, download them, support the creators of them. Some of them are free, some of them are paid. I will link all of them in the description down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or even consider subscribing to my channel if you aren't already. And then I want to thank you guys for watching. Thanks. Bye bye.